Hello my dear students. So for those whose first time it is to watch my video, welcome to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to talk about one of the lessons under professional education courses entitled how to write lesson objectives. Actually, this is based from my experience, but of course, I put evidences, facts, and theories that could help in understanding the lesson better. So, the reference is Principles of Teaching 1, Second Edition by Dr. Brenda B. Corpus and Dr. Gloria G. Salandanan. So, we're going to talk about the pointers on how to make this. First is to align your objectives to the vision, mission of the institution where the students are in, outcomes of their program through the graduate attributes stipulated in the syllabus of the course. Actually, this first pointer is not in our book. It is because I want to write it as the first one that should be considered in writing educational objectives because based from my experience, in writing educational objectives, they must be specific. And how are you going to narrow down the objectives to be specific? You must know the general objectives. And as a teacher, of course, you're going to know the general objectives from the standards that uh, the academic affairs are going to give you. So, for example, in a state university, you could see there the vision mission of the institution. And it's there on your syllabus. So, from those, you could already see the general objectives. Actually, uh, this could be narrowed down into the program outcomes of... Uh, the course through the graduate attributes of the students and from that you could already think of the specific objectives that you're going to create because you already have your basis next is construct at least three objectives considering the three basic domains so again uh, what are the three basic domains we have cognitive based from bloom and then we also have the revised revised uh, taxonomy of objectives under cognitive domain we have anderson and then we have evective under craftwell and psychomotor under harlow so it simply means that you must have at least one objective per domain next Always try to hit the highest level of the different domains. Yes, uh, a while ago, we already talked about uh, uh, having objective per domain. And uh, what's the best thing to consider in making the objective per domain? You must hit the highest level of the different domains. And how are you going to know if you're already hitting the highest level of the different domains? Of course, you're going to consult the table which were made by the different experts under these domains. So again, for cognitive domain under Bloom, it is evaluation. Uh, because not all the objectives uh, could be applicable under Anderson's highest level of uh, domain the creating okay so uh, you could consider both evaluation and creating it depends upon the set of skill or competency and then we have the affective domain with the highest level we have the characterization so here we must target the emotional quotient of the student because as we say, a human with intelligence but without emotional quotient is not a complete human. Okay, They must know how to live out this kind of set of values that you're going to teach them. And then psychomotor, it has something to do with skills. Of course, when you're going to teach skills, so the highest level for that domain is precision. They must be performing the skill with precision already. All right. Now, how are you going to do this? How are you going to hit 
the highest level of the different domains, you're going to use the verbs provided in the table of taxonomies for the writing of educational objectives. So, it's there in our book. You just need to read them. All right. We have the next pointer in writing object educational objectives. Include the time allotted in order for the students to finish the objectives. Yes, it is better that as a teacher, you are well prepared before you're going to execute your lesson in the class. But of course, you must know how long are you going to finish a certain task in order for you to set the certain stages or steps per class or per session before expecting the full outcome so here for example actually this one is the one that is written in a traditional lesson plan uh, this is the first step in order for you to make a lesson plan, especially in the Department of Education. So we have here at the end of a 60-minute period, the students should be able to, and so on and so forth. So we have the 60-minute period, that means one hour. Because here in the Philippines, one subject is taught at least one hour per day. But then, of course, it, it depends upon the institution, the educational institution. And next one is make sure that the objectives are doable, not just by the students, but you as a teacher as well. As uh, we say, you must not give task to your students that you as a teacher cannot do. Why? It is because for the objectives that will be constructed, always apply the principle begin with the end in mind another thing about this concept begin with the end in mind which we have discussed in the learning principles in our first set of lessons we must know what are we going to expect after creating a certain educational objective Okay, next, if possible, the objectives must be measured by a formal assessment. If not, there must be an activity that targets the objective needed to be met. So here we have already a key word under the subject assessment, in which we're going to discuss in other lessons. But what we're saying here is that we must already an anticipate that... Uh, a certain objective will be tested by a certain activity because if there is no activity then there's no sense that you have created that objective because as a teacher you're not just going to create objectives teach them the skills you must also check if they have really acquired the skill or if they have really learned their lesson from the things that you are teaching inside the classroom so, next, last but not the least pointer in writing educational objectives. The objectives are for the students, and you as the teacher will help them achieve those. Meaning, expect that the students are the ones who are going to achieve the targets, and you are just going to facilitate them. Another pointer that I have made, because based from my experience, a lot of teachers are mistakenly um, creating objectives not knowing that or not uh, really conscious that these objectives are meant for the students not for them as a teacher so for example you're going to write an objective in which you're going to write on your lesson plan on their cognitive domain um, teach the students the rules of subject verb agree subject verb agreement it shouldn't be like that it must be from the point of view of the students it must be on their cognitive domain learn the different rules for subject verb agreement so it is like that so you are the one making it but you're going to put it 
on the shoe of your students. So, we apply here the principle of empathy. Okay, before we end this video, let me give you an example set of lesson objectives because this is how you're going to make lesson objectives easier. So, here, my topic is basic rules in subject-verb agreement. So, that's definitely, that's under an English subject. Okay, In the first one, the first part, you could see there the time allotment. At the end of a 60-minute period, the student should be able to achieve the following. So, you could see there enumerated objectives. We have three, one for each domain. We have uh, the domains, cognitive affective and psychomotor so of course we now go to the first one cognitive domain what's my objective for that one apply the subject verb agreement rules in getting the meaning of the sentences so you can see here that it's uh, uh, talking about the information first the facts of uh, the topic first so, so it's like you're going to introduce them the topic and then you're going to let them know what the, the, your lesson is all about, okay? So, what the students are expected to learn after this subject. So, definitely, it has something to do with applying the subject verb agreement rules in getting the meaning of the sentences. And then, another one, value the importance of constructing sentences properly for a smooth conversation. So, you could see there that we have the word value and that points out the effective domain of our objectives and then we have there the importance of constructing sentences properly for a smooth conversation so definitely they're going to ask why why do we need to know this why do we need to study this why do we need to learn this so here you're going to answer them with this objective you're going to let them know the purpose of your lesson the purpose of this topic to them and then of course we have the psychomotor but for english subjects it is seldom that they're going to really have these skills okay but we have these uh, macro skills in english we have the four macro skills reading writing listening speaking uh, but here I'm going to focus on the writing macro skill. So here you could see the psychomotor domain of the lesson objectives. We have uh, construct sentences observing the correct subject verb agreement. Actually, you could have letter D there. And that's uh, the standard uh, objective for uh, certain educational institutions. It's uh, participate actively. In that uh, class okay so i hope uh, that with this example you will be able to make your own uh, set of lesson objectives based from the topic that you have chosen all right thank you for listening to this video for watching this video and of course there will be a lot more lessons that will be related to this video and of course, you need to catch up. So please don't forget to subscribe on my channel. God bless and stay safe.